Hey, Margie here. As many of you know, I'm hosting another summit, More Natural Approaches to Osteoporosis and Bone Health 2.0, and that starts on March 27th, 2023. Well, I really couldn't wait till then. There's so much information that I want to share. So today, I'm going to give you a sneak peek and share some of the really great nuggets that you can put into your life right away. And to do that, I'm having my husband, Dr. Craig Bissinger, who's an OBGYN, interview me. So this is filled with lots of great information that you can put into your life right away. So stay tuned. Welcome, Craig, and thank you so much for joining me. And I'm excited that we're going to share some tips that people can put into their life right away because there was so much information on the summit. And I just wanted to give people sort of a sneak peek, but with actionable steps that they can already start to use. So thank you for joining me and for really helping me in this discussion. Well, I've been looking forward to this all week because there's some stuff I want to know. And having gone through last year's summit uh, several times, I learned a lot last time, but I'm looking forward to more this time around. But today I got some tough tips and things that I think everyone wants to know because as a practicing doctor, I'm confronted with bone health issues all the time. And I refer back to a lot of the people from the summit in the past, but there are some questions that keep vexing me a little bit and I wanted to share a few. So here it comes to start. The first thing I want to ask you about is about DEXA scanning, because I see patients coming in all the time, and I wanted to see their scans because doctors are tr treating them with medicines, and I'm always checking to see what's going on. And more than once in a while, I find patients that over even up to a decade, their bone densities have not changed one bit. Although they do have osteoporosis, it just seems like the doctors are just not looking at what's going on. And how can we really use the DEXA scan in the right ways? To help our patients? You know, it's such a good question because it's a huge, huge problem. The DEXA score is considered the holy grail. And it's, you know, unfortunately, patients will see their doctor and they just look at the number. Let's say they say minus 2.5. And what that means is that that's, you know, they look at standard deviations away from a 30 year old. And it's just, you know, zero to one is normal minus one, minus one to minus 2.5 is called osteopenia. And then anything lower than minus 2.5 is osteoporosis. And so for some physicians, they just are like, okay, osteoporosis, you go on medication. And that number just is bone density. It has nothing to do with bone quality. And you really need to know both of them. So there's so many issues here. First of all, in terms of being, you know, one of the big things we talked about on this summit is preventing fractures. You know, what is the most important thing? Is it improving your bone density or is it, is it reducing fractures so that you don't fall and really, you know, and like a hip fracture, your life, you know, people die. There's like a, I think over 24% of people will die within a year of hip fractures and it completely changes your life. So what all of the experts and everybody agree, it's fractures that we want to prevent. Yes, we're interested in the bone density score, but it doesn't even predict. Studies have shown it only predicts a fracture 44% of women and 21% of men. And Dr. John Neustadt discussed that in the summit. So by just looking at that bone density test, we're not getting that much information. So in terms of, yes, we want to know what's going on with the bone density test. And Dr. Lonnie Simpson discusses that sometimes the people doing it aren't, because they don't get a lot of money for these bone density tests. So sometimes the people doing it aren't even trained technicians. So it's really important that you get it done properly, number one. But the second thing is, it would be, it's great if we can also look at bone quality. And you can do that with something called the TBS or trabecular bone score. And what happens, there are DEXA machines that have that component that they can use, they can actually look at and they can see what also is the quality of your bone. And taking the two together gives you a much better idea than just how dense it is. Because the, the question is, if it's just dense, it, we can still fall and fracture. You know, two bones with the same density, one could have good quality and be flexible. So if someone falls, it's not, they're not going to break. Or it could be, you know, sort of like chalk where it falls and fractures because it does not have good quality. So that was one of the recommendations whenever you can to get a trabecular bone scoring test. So I asked Dr. Lani a question I got after the last summit, and I think it's important. 
Well, you want to compare your bone density to the one before. So they always suggest use the same machine because of the accuracy of the test. It doesn't transfer from one machine to another. So what about if your machine and your place doesn't have the trabecular bone score? What do you do? And she said, it depends. It depends how much you want to see where you've gone from last year or the last time. But she said, that's, that's important. But also then you can also get the test done if it doesn't matter that much in terms of what, where you're, you're, you, know, you don't care that much about where you were in comparison, if you haven't started new treatment or done things differently, then just start off at a new place that does the trabecular bone scoring so you can see the quality. So anyway, so that's one big thing about the, the bone density. And just the last thing I want to say about that is it's important because that only gives you, it, it's one snapshot. You're not finding out. You don't know. Does that mean that your whole life as a child, you really didn't, you know, you wouldn't have good nutrition, you had an eating disorder, you didn't exercise and just didn't develop a lot of bone or are you actively losing bone? And that question has to be answered. And what I like in the summit, they really talk in detail. Dr. Keith McCormick, who does phenomenal testing, goes in detail on the bone markers, what they mean. And through the bone markers, you can actually learn, are you actively losing calcium now? Is your bone breaking down? And that's a big difference. A person who's actively losing bone versus someone who just never developed the bone and they're maintaining. So all those things are really important and it's discussed in detail in the summit. But I think for everybody listening, if you can, the trabecular bone score and then bone markers. And bone markers also, you can go three months and see if you're doing some type of treatment, is it effective? Well, thank you for that information. But on that same kind of note, you mentioned about fractures. And I know that our, the big nemesis for all of us is avoiding the fractures, the disability, the encumberments that relate to that and the potential for uh, death as well as this limitation of your ability to live. And I know that this time around, you've taken a lot of uh, extra special thought in picking and selecting some people and some information about fall prevention and prevention of fractures. So I, I would really like to hear what you're going to have in store for us on the summit on that. It's so important because regardless of where you are, everybody can take steps to reduce fracture. So we'll start off with exercise. Exercise is so important. And unfortunately, as we age, and if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's what happens with balance. As people get older, they, their balance starts to wane unless they're doing exercises. So what I did this year, and actually this is available to everybody right away. You don't even have to wait till the summit. And you were my videographer, so you know exactly what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> A lot of bare and bones films, you know? <laughs> and so what I did, I created a sheet on improving balance and improving posture because this is so important. And we can, you know, 95% of fractures don't happen. They happen because of a fall. So if we can prevent falls, that's huge. So in terms of balance, what I did, I created a sheet with different balance exercises and they're not hard. And basically, you know, standing on a foot, doing things where, where we're walking tandem, you know, one foot in front of the other. When we challenge our balance, our body learns and improves at any age. I mean, I work with people in their late 80s and their balance is phenomenal. My absolutely favorite way, and this has been shown in the research to improve balance is Tai Chi and Qigong. And I believe the reason that is, and again, there's studies on this, but the reason to me it is, is because you're moving. You're moving in different patterns. So if you're moving forward and back or sideways and you practice that, and that becomes in your repertoire. So if you're walking one day and you hit a rock, you have that. You're able, to, you're able to bounce back and not fall over because you've been practicing. So in the summit, what I, so I have balance exercise and I show you two qigongs that you'll get right away. You know, once you opt into the summit, you get these sheets. And so, but also on the summit, I have Dr. Matt Jeffs and Dr. And Dr. Jeffs is just someone who, I sort of fell into, he's a doctor of physical therapy, but also a Qigong and Tai Chi instructor extraordinaire. And he combines physical therapy with 
with Qigong and Tai Chi. So we've created something called Bone Strong Qigong, really putting the principles of Qigong and Tai Chi with also principles of good posture, good mechanics, core stabilization. So people are increasing their strength, stability, plus really improving their balance. So in and the summit, Matt goes through a little routine that everybody can get started on. And do you want to tell about your experience with Qigong? Because um, <laughs> yeah, Matt was the fifth person I've I've watched on Qigong and the only one I've stuck with. And I, I love him. When I'm stuck in the hospital waiting for babies to come, I put on a Tai Chi and I'm sitting in that middle room hiding out, just doing the whole thing. So my balance is better already. And I feel better. It's just nice. And I look forward to doing it. At the end, it's very relaxing. So yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, Dr. Jeffs on the podcast and the interviews. And go ahead. You know, it's really funny because we'll just have to tell. Years ago, I've always believed in Tai Chi and Qigong and wanted to do more of it myself. And I've taken a few courses for physical therapists, but, you know, I also wanted Craig to do it. And so I was pregnant. We're talking a long time ago. And there was a local class. And so he, he said, yes, he would come. So I was really excited. And we went to this class and the guy just said, follow me. And he's just doing things. And it was so hard to follow. And he really, you know, it wasn't fun at all. It was sort of boring. Plus it was hard to follow. So you didn't even know if you were doing things right. But the worst part was one of Craig's patients was there who had terrible posture and osteoporosis. And she's doing everything in a horrible posture. So it wasn't, it was, it really could have increased her risk of fracture. So it's important when you do this, that you do it with someone that is, you know, that's making sure you're doing things correctly, but it's just something that, yeah. So I was really excited that when you, I was, I was sort of worried. I'm like, okay, I want you to try, try Matt's program. And I was, I was so happy that you were interested in it, but people right. in the community have been we have like a great group and people in the community have been doing the Qigong and Tai Chi, but you'll learn a routine. You'll get to get started on the, on the, on the summit. And also though, I, I put other things in there because as a physical therapist, there's a lot of things. It's not that simple. Yes. Do my exercises that will certainly get you started, but it's not that simple. Our foot is the first and ankle are the first line of protection against a fall prevention, really. So we want a strong foot and ankle, but we want a flexible foot and ankle. So I took, I went to the next step in that I have two people. So Penny, um, Penelope Wasserman is this time giving us a whole thing on dance, how you can use dance, which I love, but she does a whole thing on the foot and ankle and some great exercises that we can all do to really loosen up and warm up our foot and ankle before we even start walking or dancing. So that's a great thing as well as Robin Eisen. Robin is a physical therapist and Feldenkrais practitioner. And she has some great movement through awareness lessons. And it's very hard to explain. So all I'm going to tell you is come to the summit and do her class. Do not miss this because you will feel much more flexible. And she really takes us through an experience. So all those things are going to truly, I promise you, it will help improve your balance and reduce your risk of falls. And you know, we don't want to be scared. We want to be able to feel solid on our feet. So I think that's so important. And just one more thing I want to say about that. And we know I can talk forever, but the thing I wanted to say about that is a big problem. And we know this from your dad, Craig, is distraction. You know, so oh. often it's not that we fall because of something, because our mind, our mind, we're thinking 30 million things. And we're not focusing on what we're doing and where we're going and our surroundings. So just one thing I urge everybody, it's just as important to just sort of clear your mind. Don't multitask. When you're walking, pay attention and don't be on your cell phone. It's going to make such a difference and just reduce your risk of falls as much as everything else. Oh, I can't agree with you more about that one. And I appreciate you acknowledging it. My father did have a fall, but he was very lucky and didn't hurt himself. But it, it highlights the fact that all it took was one more step uh, and he may not have survived a simple deck of fall in his 80s. But in talking about surviving, you know, there were some good moments from the summit last time. One of them I experienced with my own patients, and that was regard, regarding testing. I had a 41 year old woman who just didn't feel great. I delivered her baby 
you know, about two years earlier. And maybe that was just because she had a two-year-old, but you know, we do testing and in her test results, I noticed that her calcium was on the very top of normal and just slightly abnormal. And normally I just brush those things off, but I kept remembering this one lecture of Diva Boone, Dr. Boone, and I said, something's not right. And after going back and reviewing the, her labs and asking uh, Margie to reach out to Dr. Boone, we sent her off for evaluations and she turned out to have a parathyroid tumor, which was eating away her calcium in her age grouping. And she had successful surgery and her bones are better, her calcium's better. And you know what? I, I just am excited to hear what she's going to be doing for you this year, Margie. I am so, this is one of the things that really, oh, it just, it just warmed my heart. There were 20 people at least who reached out to Dr. Boone, but so many people also became aware of your, that you, and for, unfortunately, you have to look at your own lab work because for some reason there's a disconnect and they're not teaching in medical school that when the lab comes out and it says normal, it may not be normal because it's a huge range and it, it doesn't look in different ages. So the key numbers, she said, when you look at your calcium value is if you're over 40, you do not want to see it in the tens. It should be in the nines. And then the other thing is, and I just think that's unfortunately, it's something physicians, I, I see this so often. So then the next thing is they say, well, well parathyroid hormone. And, and the thing is your parathyroid hormone can be normal and your bone and your calcium is high. And that's still a, that's still a problem with the parathyroid. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but the key is the good news is Dr. Boone's talk is available right now too. So you can, I, I really listen to it and she has a calculator that you can put your values in, but this is so important. I just urge everyone to look at your labs because through my career, I've seen this a lot. I've seen where four years could have gone by before this was picked up, you know, oh, we're waiting. Let's just look at it. Well, what Dr. Boone taught me was that every minute that you go, even a small increase, if there's too much calcium and there's a problem with your parathyroid and there's a tumor, you're going to start losing bone. So no one wants to do that. And so this is so important. And everybody just go to your lab work, look at your blood calcium level, look at your parathyroid tumor. I mean, not tumor, look at your parathyroid values. And you can, and, and the at lecture is available right now. There's three talks that are available now, but it's something that you cannot just say your doctor said your labs are normal, unfortunately. And look at your patient. That made me so happy. A 41 year old, he or she would have started losing bone early on, and maybe this would have been missed. So it just, I was so happy and, and so happy that people actually ended up having a surgery. It's a benign tumor. And so and this is one of the situations, you know, we're into natural approaches, but there's no other approach for this. You have to have this removed and then you can do all the natural approaches. But the good news is that your bone density actually will get better because things start working. You're not having that tumor pressing on and, you know, malfunction of the parathyroid glands. So that was just so exciting to me and that people, so many, so many people's lives and people wrote to me and thanked me because of that. So. It, 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 and even just, I must say, just recently, I had someone who I saw and they were waiting. They were waiting. It was over 10. They were waiting because their parathyroid hormone level was normal. And I sent, I asked Diva Boone, Dr. Diva Boone, and she's like, no, this is, you know, she has hyperparathyroidism. So, and yeah. So anyway, so that's good. And, and she's available too. She loves talking to people and, you know, you, you can always contact her as well. Uh, we need uh, two things. One, uh, people do not get a parathyroid or hormone as a standard test. It's only added on after you have a problem. So let's not make everyone think that's part of our standard testing. It definitely is not. Just to remind everybody about that. And we need to move along because we have still a lot to cover. Our time is creeping by. It's having too much fun so far. You know, I, I noticed that this year you had some food demonstrations in the kitchen. And I'm kind of curious about that. I kind of like to dabble in the kitchen. So are there some specific tips and things new this time, wrinkles in the kitchen about food and nutrition that we should be looking out for? Yeah, this time, I, you know, 
this summit I wanted to make very different. I didn't, I wanted, because a lot of people said to me, oh, you can use the same talks and just add a few. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. All the people who came last year, and there were almost 60,000 people who came, I wanted them, I want people to come back. I wanted to give new information. And we sort of started a movement last year and I want to continue it. I wanted to build upon it. So some of the people that gave information last year who I know are amazing chefs and, or, and just have great tips for the kitchen and really teach people how you can cook for your bones. So, so Irma Jennings, she does a phenomenal, a really a wonderful presentation on the kitchen, but she focuses on protein. And this is a big thing in the summit this year because we need protein. And years ago, people felt that, oh, too much protein, you lose calcium, but it, the research does not show that at all. The research shows that with protein, higher protein intakes actually increase bone mineral density, slows the rate of bone loss, and actually reduces hip fracture. So there's research on this. So we need a certain amount of protein. And so Irma does a really great job of showing us how we can get that in our diet. But I just want to share a few more things about protein because everybody needs to hear this. As we get older, this is a problem. A lot of people are finding that people are not getting enough protein. And one of the reasons is the RDA, which is the recommended dietary allowance, is only, so for someone, there's a, you know, there's a formula, but for someone like me, let's say, who weighs 124, that would be 45, that's milligrams of protein a day. But they found that that's not enough. The research shows you have to go beyond the RDA to have enough protein for our bones, for our bones to stay strong and even in, improve. And this is critical. Because the bone, you know, you need, you need this protein matrix. That's where the calcium salts are embedded in. So it's very important to have strong, healthy bones to have the protein. So according to different speakers, so Irma was saying one of the easy ways is just divide your body weight in half. The Cultons have a formula. They have your body weight times 0.545. And then doc, and, um, Dr. Newsett, his what he said is even, he uses a formula that you take your body weight, divide by 2.2, and you multiply by 1.3. Anyway, what that comes down to, so for me, what that came down to was for Irma, I was six, it was around 62. With Dr. Newstat, let's see what I wrote these down. With Dr. Newstat, it was a little higher in the 70s, and then it was a little higher in the Cultons. It was, I think, 60 something as well. But the point is, it's over the, you have that with the minimum, the minimum necessary. And the problem is, not everybody gets that. And especially, I'm, I do believe in intermittent fasting. It's a good thing. But if you're only getting two meals a day, then if it, let's say it's 65 for you or 70, then you need to get 35 you know, milligrams of protein in each meal, which a lot of people aren't getting. So very important, go look at the amount of protein that you're getting. Irma and the other person who's doing the demonstration is, is Dr. Sally Lamont. And I've had, I've had actually both. I've had, I've had food, both Irma and Dr. Sally cook and they're, it's delicious. But, but the point is both of them talk about how much protein you need as well. Some of the other experts, but it's very important. And one last thing that the Cultons talked about that was new to me that I hadn't heard was that, yes, it's great to get the protein and that's so important, but you need enough calories. If you don't have enough calories, in your diet, the body's going to use the protein just, just to get by, just for your basic functions and not for your bones. So you need enough calories so that the protein can be spared. I just thought that was so interesting. So what mm -hmm. they suggested you do, you look up basal metabolic rate and you can go you know, anywhere and just get a, an idea of how many calories you need and just make sure you're getting enough calories as well as the protein. Because you know there are people as they get older, don't get enough calories, and then the, you're, you need the protein. It's not going to be effective. And one more thing, one more thing about the protein is that also it's most efficient in like around 37 grams to 40. So don't try to have all 70 at one time. Your body can't use it effectively. Anyway, those are some little tips, but definitely in the summit, you'll learn way more and all sorts of good ways that you can get protein in your diet and that are yummy as well. Well, that brings into another really common problem because when you eat food, you have to digest it properly. And I can tell you, 
I have a lot of patients coming in on these proton pump inhibitors for acid reflux and heartburn. And I am perplexed why they're on it forever and ever. So, and I know there's some issues that your speaker is going to be talking about. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for me, Mark? Yeah, so many of the speakers talked about this, that because they confront this in their practices. It's a big problem. And actually, Andrea Nakayama goes in detail why we actually need stomach acid in her whole talk. But here's how horrible this is. Four years on proton pump inhibitors, your, your risk of hip fracture increases by 217%. So here we're talking about trying to reduce our risk of fractures because that's the whole problem. And by just being on these proton pump inhibitors, and they found if you were on it solely for acid, you know, solely for heartburn, uh -huh. it increased your risk by 350%. So this is a huge issue. And what I've seen, and I, you've seen this as well, that you can get off of these. You know, it's very important to talk to your doctor, but there are other methods to control heartburn without being on this proton pump inhibitors. And yep. they're effective and it's something that's just tearing apart your bones because we need, we need acid. Our stomach needs acid. So it's a huge risk factor if you're on it. There's, you know, definitely listen to the summit, but it's something that you really want to talk to your practitioner about and figure out how you can. Sometimes people need it short term if there's an ulcer. So it's not a matter of just taking yourself off it. Talk to your practitioner. But these were never meant to be long term and they're just causing yeah. havoc on our bones. I agree with you all wholeheartedly in that respect. Um, thank you. The other thing which I think people would neglect to recommend is environmental toxins which are all over the place now and their effects on your body, your inflammation and your bones and you know, having uh, been exposed to toxins inadvertently in my environments and they were doing construction in the hospital. I'm very sensitive because I developed a lot of autoimmune trouble uh, years ago that uh, would never have been there. And I'd still be eating a lot of bad bread and not be gluten free, by the way. Um, but nevertheless, can you just briefly talk about some of the environmental issues in our environment? And sure. Okay, us on that. Thank you. Sure. So here's the thing. A lot, and this is what I see in my practice too, and just working with so many people, people just don't take this as seriously as they should. They're sort of like, oh, yeah, I guess that's important. But we have, you know, our body can handle some toxins, you know, but when we fill up that bucket, then it overflows and everything falls apart and our detoxification systems go haywire and we're filled with inflammation and inflammation is one of the root causes of bone loss. So it was very interesting because Dr. Ailey Cohn is on the summit and she's a rheumatologist. She deals, she's also done, she's also done a lot of work with environmental, environmental medicine and as well as internal medicine. So here's someone that deals with all sorts of things. And what's one of the most important things she's found is you have to deal with these environmental toxins. And so it's not something that down the road you should just say, oh yeah, it's something every person should get started on now. And it's not that hard. And she talks about even with the water, you know, what's in our water. And there's I'm not gonna go into it right now, but it's just something I think everybody should pay attention to. I have had a lot of speakers on this on on actually the podcast as well because this is so important. But on the summit where we're dealing with bone health, so many of the practitioners made a big deal that you must deal with this. And I we went into more detail. I have someone on talking about about mold because mold is an issue and it affects so many of us as well as you know other things. But just for now, everybody start looking at. Your, your products. And you start with one thing because this can be overwhelming. So you just start slowly changing things out, you know, whether it's your cosmetics, your water, just getting a water filter. And, and it's right. We do it in our house and it's, it's just, is it any big deal? As long as you order everything, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really, <laughs> no, it really, it really, it really isn't a big deal. Now they make things and they're not that expensive. You know, they make things that are organic. They make things that don't have all of the, you know, all, all of the toxic chemicals in it. So it's just a matter of, shoot, a matter of making it important and realizing this can be one of the sources of inflammation 
and start making changes. But definitely listen to Dr. Ailey Cohn because she has some great tips. And it's just something to realize it is important. And, you know, even opening your windows and your doors, getting more fresh air, because it's the indoor air that can be a problem. So again, just prioritizing, starting one thing at a time. And it's just a common theme again throughout the summit that we need to reduce the toxins and even plastic, you know, plastic's an issue. So now buy, buy, use the plastic Tupperware you have for things like paper or other things you're storing in the garage, but not for your food, and especially not for food with oil in it or anything that can leach. I think we uh, have a house full of, of laundry and household cleaning products that you, you <laughs> stored in here over the time as well from, uh, I don't remember who's from you. Can you tell them? Cause that may be a, a place that they may start with as well for toxin reduction. Yeah, I personally love the company Truly Free. I just think it's a wonderful company. And what I like is that, so they send you one. And I've actually had, I've had Stephen on the podcast and talked about this because, but it for me, it's been really easy. So you'll get one bottle, you know, a plastic bottle and you you just don't have to buy another plastic bottle and they you just, they send you the refills and you just put water in it. So they're saving plastic. It's such a problem in the environment. So not only are you using great or you know, wonderful products that are free of the chemicals, but you're also making a big contribution to the planet as well. It, so it, I'm a big, and it works. It's great. I know. I was going to plug it because I had this really dirty shirt. And I said, <laughs> no way in the heck this stuff's going to do anything here. And I'm scrubbing it with this stuff. Yeah. I put it in there. The comes out was clean. I couldn't believe it. I was laughing. I was sure this was a scam. Yeah, it was really funny because we've used the products, but if this was really, we really should have made a commercial about this. We really were putting it to the test. It was a disaster, the shirt. And it, it's 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 like um, something you can rub on, you know, and I use it. And, but you know, my, our clothes aren't really that dirty. We don't have young children or anything like that. So, and it came out perfect. It was All right. All right. really funny. Do, 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 a, do a favor, give them a link so they can, they can find it. Well, I, just, you know, I don't have to worry about it, but anyway. I mean, one, up, one more thing about that company that I love. Okay. They also make something. Um, they also employ people in underserved areas. So certain money, they have these women make these things for the dryer. It's called the dryer angel that I just love. And it's, it, it, um, you know, it's, it's instead of those sheets and you can reuse it, but the people that make those are getting money as well. So it's, you know, I always like to help the planet and the world as much as possible. So anyway, anyway, that's a little off our topic because we're talking about yeah, the summit, I know. but well, I have we're one giving last resources. Question, yeah. <laughs> I have one last question, which is about energy and fatigue. And I want to say a moment about that first, because, you know, people who are, I have a lot of patients who are also depressed. And I think that it goes back to energy fatigue kind of things. And if you're depressed, you're not exercising. And if you're depressed, it causes all kinds of other things that go in your body that will lead to more bone loss. And I would love you to talk about some of the people because you have some very interesting people in that area too. Yes. And I think this was a point that, that was brought out in the summit. We really didn't talk about this last year in the same way. Dr. Peter Kahn has a great, great talk on how you're dealing with autoimmune issues and that there's that it's not just how to do it, you know, what you need to do and what you need to take, but but the order, you know, that there's actually an order. And the step one is working on your energy because having enough energy in your system to help heal, help improve your bones, you need that energy for whatever you're dealing with. And so I thought that was really important and what can be done. And then Dr. Evan Hirsch, that's his specialty. He's a physician who deals with energy and reducing fatigue. So he also goes into what needs to be done. But I think important, this can't be done down the road. Like, oh yeah, I'll work on my bones and do all this. And then I'll deal with my fatigue. No, we must deal with that. We must see what's causing that. Deal with that so that we can be proactive and get involved in a whole, you know, in a program. So I think the two of them do something. But to talk to your question in terms of the depression is that every morning, every day in the summit, this is probably my favorite part that I, I, I do a happiness you know, for those, I think everybody knows I teach happiness and it's just something that's near and dear to my heart. And I've seen miracles when people incorporate these concepts. So every morning I give one 
tip, a powerful tip, though, that people can put in their day. And I think also just becoming happier, having more joy in your life and your mood starts improving, reducing your stress. That also, because that stress, stress is and fatigue go together. So that also is going to help reduce fatigue. So I think all those things put together is is something that's very important. And, you know, just just if you're really tired, it you need to figure it out because that will make a big difference in your program and and just improving your bones and overall health. Well, thank you, Margie. I have to say one other thing before I close, which is I've been watching Margie for the last four or five months doing these interviews and setting this whole project up. And I watched her do this last year again, and honestly, it is a labor of love. I, I, she goes down in the morning at eight and she comes up at seven for air at night. <laughs> and, you know, the nice, beautiful days go, come and go. And I'm out walking and I'm biking and she's in the basement. So I really hope that if you really want to learn some amazing tips, I can tell you clinically, I use this stuff all the time, for my patients, um, and it works. And I, I hope you will find the time to at least sign up. I'm not trying to plug you, but I'm telling my patients to do it. So I might as well tell everyone else. Uh, and listen, I think you'll find, everyone will find something that they can take home. I'm sure of that. And I can take Margie over with me. Okay, <laughs> for me. Well, I have to let people know I have an office and it's above ground. So it's not, it sounds like you're, I'm used, I go to the dungeon. It's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> my office just happens to be in the lowest floor, which is above ground. So it's, it's and there's nice windows. So it's, it's not as though I'm going. <laughs> the way you said it, it sounded like, you know, terrible. And no, and to me, the lectures and interviewing people, it was, it, it was really a pleasure because I learned so much. I learned so much from this new summit, even though I did one last year and I interview people all the time, there was so much information and I'm just really excited about, it. but right now you'll get three talks. I'm just going to tell you what you get. You'll get to Dr. Diva Boom, Dr. John Neustadt, who talks about fracture. And then Dr. Shiroko Sokic, who was on recently about love, but her talk's really good and shows acupressure points for bone health. And she also shows some, some practices. So you get the talks plus my sheet on the exercises and another sheet I've done and a, a book I wrote on exercise and osteoporosis. So there's lots of stuff you'll get right away. And, you know, truly my goal is to, is to just help people and get the word out and spread not just my information, because there's so many experts. And that's what I love about the summit. And when we can share all of the brilliance of all these people, you know, bring it into one place. And again, there's a lot of talk. So you don't have to do everything. Just pick whatever you'd like. I mean, even about children, how they can improve their bone density. I have, I have Dr. Elisa's song on this year. It's phenomenal. You know, so there's you just pick, if you want to learn the exercises, go with the exercises. You know, there's new ones there too. So lots of things. And I just hope it can serve you and you can even, you know, just anything that you can do to improve your bones, your overall health. And what I say at the end of every talk is because I believe that happy bones <laughs> create a happy life. Happy life. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Craig, for joining me today. All right. Have a nice one, Margie. I'll see you downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my interview with Craig and have some new information that you can put into your life right away. All the links to sign up for the summit will be in the show notes. And as I said, there's so much information and you'll get some right away. So I hope you join me. I worked really, really hard to share what people asked for after last summit. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next episode and I hope also in the summit.